In this session, we're looking at educational technology ideation, essentially coming up with new educational technologies to be used in education. So let's look at some of the things that we're going to be exploring. First off, what opportunities exist around educational technology? Um, the process of ideating, coming up with new ideas and new opportunities, networking and funding possibilities in order to help achieve um, these entrepreneurial ventures. The aspects of educational organizations you need to be aware of, particularly if you're not involved yourself in teaching and learning or teaching, um, because many ed tech um, organizations and opportunities fail because they don't fully understand the workplace that they want to deploy such tools within. Um, schools and other educational organizations such as universities have very distinct requirements and cultures that those coming from outside of these cultures often conflict with. We'll also look at sustaining and growing the deployment of educational technologies and some important aspects around interoperability and open data. And then finally, we're going to look at some of the current trends and opportunities that exist within educational technology. So let's get started. First off, what opportunities exist within educational technology? So probably one of the key ones is the improvement of student skills, their learning. But it doesn't necessarily have to occur just within a schooling environment or a learning environment. It can also include at home or in terms of lifelong education, opportunities for learning to occur before school, before formal education, but also post formal education, after they've finished um, some higher education or in the workplace. And then throughout their lives, there's opportunities for education to occur um, predominantly in retirement, where people have more free time and are interested in pursuing other endeavours, which can also include education. So another aspect is around the idea of family engagement. Um, the use of educational technologies, particularly with young children, to allow parents to engage with the educational process where it may be many years since they've been involved in schooling and schooling has changed quite dramatically in the interim, there are still opportunities for parents to be involved in helping their children learn, um, either before school and during school to support them in engaging with the learning processes as they have changed within the schooling sector. Now there's also the opportunity to deploy educational technologies in a range of new areas um, in developing countries and in disadvantaged areas where educational technologies have not normally been available or educational opportunities have been limited, um, ed tech applications can make positive advances in those spaces. Now there's some other areas that are traditionally focused around educational technologies, particularly around assessment and the measurement of student learning, but also in supporting students in doing um, well in established assessment processes. So where there are established exams or um, scholarship opportunities, having educational technology tools that assist students in preparing for those and maximizing their potential um, is a very common educational technology application. And finally, around educational teacher development, um, improving the teaching process through the use of educational technologies. That's another area that's um, being developed. So there's a range of different approaches to improving teacher productivity um, and effectiveness. And we can use various tools, learning management systems is one example, but there's a whole range of others that allow teachers and schools and educators to be more effective in doing what they do through the use of technologies. But someone needs to develop these technologies. And that's what EdTech is, is about. 
And some of the aims is then to make education more accessible to more and more students, to reduce disadvantages um, and close opportunity gaps to make sure that everyone has got an opportunity for education and to also address the achievement gap to make sure that more and more of our students can achieve at the highest levels than have been able to do so in the past. So these are a range of different um, reasons and spaces that EdTech can be developed for. But the challenge is then coming up with ideas. Now, if you're in the sector, if you're involved in teaching, then it's a little bit easier to come up with new ideas. For those outside the sector, um, it's often looking at new technologies as they are developed and trying to see how they might be applied within teaching. So some of the approaches for ideating, coming up with these new ideas, looking at what's currently available, what's currently being attempted and done, looking at where it's been successful, but also where it's failed. And maybe you can work out why it's failed and then come up with something that can then be successful. The other key aspect is looking at what the end user, what the, what the people who are going to use your educational technology solution, what they want. Of course, it's great coming up with ideas for what you think people want or what you want, but doesn't necessarily mesh with what the market wants. So you need to think about things from the perspective of students or from teachers or from parents and explore what they are willing to engage with. Now, it's also in a process of researching, particularly around the new technologies as, the, as they're available, but also new pedagogies and ways of learning. Of course, this can open up new opportunities and new ideas that can be explored through educational technology applications. Another key aspect is iteration. Um, trying something out and then improving it, particularly trying it out early, so getting a prototype developed and exploring what works about that or what doesn't work and then slowly evolving and developing your solution. Um, it also helps in getting access to um, support through financing or access to students or teachers wherever what access is needed by having something that you can showcase and demonstrate a proof of concept. So in Teams, post a, an idea that you've come up with that could be developed for use in schools or universities or any other educational setting. So some of the ways of going about um, engaging with developing an educational technology application. One is using data to improve your design. So actually basing your design upon real data, how it's actually um, working. So getting student effectiveness data, teacher effectiveness data, or teacher engagement data, relying upon data to inform your decision making rather than just your own gut feeling. Creating what's called a minimally viable product, a prototype that can demonstrate your ideas, get it being used and then start improving it rather than trying to develop a complex solution to a complex problem and then finding out that lots of aspects of it don't work or don't fit the right circumstances. And getting feedback and having processes built into your system that gather feedback, that gather, gather data on how effective it is being used, where it's being ineffectively um, achieving results and using that data to improve what you've designed. So all of this comes down to evaluating the impact of your solution. How is it actually working? Is, if you're aiming to change some aspect of education, how are you measuring that? How are you evaluating its effectiveness in doing that? Too many educational technology applications seem like a great idea, but don't follow through and actually determine whether or not they work or not. Okay. So some of the key areas where EdTech applications fail is that they don't take enough cons uh, consideration of protecting students' data and privacy. This is a big thing in schools in particular, not so much in universities and in out-of-school educational applications, but certainly within schools, schools 
um, protect student privacy and data quite um, rigidly. They abuse it quite a lot themselves, but they won't let others abuse it. So you need to either be inside the system and be, have access to that data. But at some point, if you want to commercialize an EdTech application, you would have to step outside that system. And all of the rights you have within the system will no longer be applicable to you. You won't be able to use student data in anywhere near the way that teachers and academics can in universities and school settings. So you need to take those things into consideration. Um, the other thing is to think about how to do that evaluation process. If it is going to be a research process, then that requires ethical clearances and a whole range of other processes which are in place to protect uh, participants of research. So if you're relying upon a research process to inform your, the effectiveness of your educational technology application, you'll need to go through what any research process a research project has to go through in terms of ensuring that the act of conducting the research is not harmful. Okay, so once you've got this fantastic idea and you've thought about all the considerations, you now need to have some funding or support to getting it put into place. Now, sometimes you can do it yourself, but in order to do things at any real scale, particularly if it's gonna be of a commercial scale, you really do need some external support. Now, this can be initially done by getting, in, getting involved with others that are also doing similar things. Uh, it's called networking, um, educational hackathons and startup weekends and entrepreneurial events are all places where edtech innovators come together and share ideas and share approaches and what's worked for them and what hasn't worked and different ways of gaining support and and also supporters of such edtech innovations will also attend those events and they may be involved in conferences or edtech camps or so essentially anywhere where educators are coming together to explore what can be done, but also in particular where EdTech innovators are coming together to explore what can be done. These can provide fantastic opportunities for insight and innovation on your own behalf. Now there's two main um, structural organizations to support this. One are the EdTech incubators and the EdTech accelerators. Incubators are often supported by government initiatives or sometimes university initiatives or nonprofit initiatives, and they basically get together a whole lot of edtech innovators and try to help them start up their projects. The other type are accelerators, and this is generally supported by commercial interests, which will generally take a percentage of any eventual profits, and they'll provide more intensive um, support often involving startup funding to get things um, commercialized in particular. So incubators are often around supporting the ideas, um, accelerators are around commercializing and supporting the implementation and deployment of um, edtech innovations. And they both have different advantages and they can both be utilized. Um, but there are other ways of gaining support and funding. Crowdfunding is a, an approach that's being done where you um, publish about your idea and seek um, financial support from people in the community, essentially. Um, there's grants and innovate, innovation funds. This is how universities often approach edtech innovations, um, by seeking grants, government grants or industry grants, um, developing the application. And then because of the nature of the nonprofit aspect of universities, providing that um, value back to the community. But there can also be um, angel investors and venture capitalists, which will provide funding, often with the expectation that they'll take a, a, a profit um, when, the, when the edtech innovation becomes profitable. Um, so they'll make their money back and um, do so with that perspective in mind. But they can often bring in business experience and expertise, particularly in deployment and distribution, that many edtech innovators, particularly coming from education or from technology, don't have a skill set around um, commercializing and making their edtech um, innovations profitable and marketable. So they can all bring together different perspectives on edtech innovations. 
So share with teams an idea you may have for getting support for your EdTech innovation. So the next thing to consider is where, the, where it's going to be used, and in particular in educational organisations. Um, this is particularly relevant for those that are coming from outside the schooling sector or the university sector, where you've only got an experience of educational organisations as a student. And that's very different to how educators um, understand how organisations work. But even educators don't necessarily have a good understanding of the financial and policy making processes that occur in educational organisations. Um, and so there's a range of different levels that need to be considered when trying to deploy an educational technology innovation into an organisation. So some of the things to be thinking about are federal and state responsibilities and um, around the funding that can be involved in educational technology um, innovations. How different sectors approach things differently. The government sector schools are quite different to Catholic or independent sector schools. Um, public and private schools are very much involved in that, but also the age levels. Um, educational technology innovations aimed at primary school or pre-primary school can be quite different to those being aimed at high school or university or TAFE sector or other sectors outside of schooling. There can often be a range of technology infrastructure that's required to support an educational technology, particularly if it relies upon internet and online database interactions. And these may not necessarily be available within many educational technology organisations. They may be explicitly blocked or simply not supported by the, um, by the organisation. And this includes down to the platform, such as whether or not it's suitable for um, a PC platform or a Macintosh platform or Apple platform or tablet devices and different different types of mobile devices. All of these things you cannot assume are fully supported within an organization and you need to do your research and find out where you want to have your educational technology um, used and whether or not it can be actually effectively used in those instances. And then within the organizations, there'll be key decision makers and key people that will make decisions about whether or not your application can be even, even trialed through to whether or not it can be used and whether or not it can then be supported with payments or um, supported in the long term. So these are, again, things you need to understand in order to be successful in terms of deploying an educational technology application. So a few other key aspects around that are the university and school leaders who are involved in the decision making, the academics, teachers and instructional specialists, which will be providing advice to those decision makers if they can't make the decisions themselves as to whether or not to deploy and use the educational technology innovation you've come up with, whether or not the technology support staff are in a position to support the use of that innovation and whether or not they'll actually um, be supportive of its use, um, particularly if it comes from a different platform that they're not familiar with or utilises other aspects that they aren't trained with or have experience with or a desire to be engaging with. And if it's being deployed in homes and families, whether or not it supports the technology that's available in homes, um, the internet usage, the patterns of um, usage around time, and if you've designed a great application that requires students to work on it for four hours a day, that's probably not going to mesh well with how most parents expect their children to engage with educational technology. So these are again things you need to think through. And then finally, of course, you need to think about the students themselves. Are they going to engage with the technology? Is it Has it been designed to suit what tools and platforms they are utilising? Is it designed to support their learning outcomes and their um, ways of learning and again this whole range of aspect that needs to be considered when designing and developing an educational application. So a few things to be thinking around that is coming up with some way of testing your solutions and products and seeing how they work in different circumstances and situations. Trying it out in different schools and different settings, trying it out with different key stakeholders and students 
trying to preempt all of these decision-making processes so that you've got answers to these um, so that your application will be more successful. And then thinking about what support and training will be required to go with your application so that it can be then successful. And sometimes, particularly in school settings, this can be as important as the application itself. Because if teachers aren't prepared and taught how to utilize the tool, then they may not engage with it because they, even though it may be the best tool imaginable, unless the teachers know how to effectively utilize it and can apply it in a classroom environment, then it's not likely to be even looked at. Okay, so some other ways of improving the decision-making processes of getting your application uh, supported within organizations is to find champions. Some of the big tech companies um, have um, structured programs to develop champions. Uh, I'm a champion for Apple and for um, Microsoft and for Google, and they've given me various awards and structures I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator and Google Innovative something or other. Um, and there's various structures that are in place to um, engage educators, particularly those that have got a lot of experience, to know about different approaches and products and edtech innovations and to be able to share that through conferences and workshops and engagement with schools and research in terms of academics. Another aspect, particularly in um, schools, is around gaining union support. Um, if your application involves a fair amount of investment in terms of time and training and preparation and all the rest, then it may not be supported by teacher unions who guard teachers' time and um, workloads quite rigorously, as is their appropriate job. And so you need to make sure that what your proposing and preparing is going to be acceptable in terms of workload practices. If it's going to be costly, then it has to have a place within the budget. And generally it has to displace something else. So the argument has to be made as to how this new innovation is worthwhile um, for a school or university or whatever place it has to um, be deployed within. If it's going to require a lot of training and preparation and support, then if you have to be on site or have technicians on site to support it, that has to be managed and worked out. Um, and that can be quite a complex involvement process in itself. Likewise, if you've got to provide ongoing training and in service, that has to be sorted. Um, there's also the more nitty gritty things of developing contracts and employment agreements and all the rest that have to be brought into place, which many educators and edtech innovators are not familiar with. And it has to be at some stage priced so that you can be remunerated for your investment or involvement. The supporters that you'd be able to gather can get a return on their investments and it can be sustained long term. Of course, while you may have great uh, philanthropic um, initiatives that you're willing to uh, support, are you willing to do so for the next 10, 20 years as it needs to be developed and re, um, upgraded and improved upon over that time period? So these are things that need to be considered when coming up for an edtech innovation. So again, into teams, post an idea you have for getting your edtech innovation noticed and adopted by an educational organization. So as alluded to, we need to think about how to sustain and grow an edtech innovation. It's not just about coming up with the idea and creating the edtech innovation. That's just the first step. Then there's a whole trail of, or train of um, processes that need to be put in place to see it um, deployed and sustained long-term. So one approach is to make it free, um, or at least free initially or free with some um, further capabilities that are then paid for. This is called freemium um, processes. Uh, so often it's provided free for teachers, but then charged for students' use or 
um, charged for parental use. Um, there might be sort of cut down versions or various initiatives available to have schools adopted initially. Sometimes it can be marketed directly to parents. So avoid marketing to schools, um, market direct to parents, which will then pay directly for the product. It can be licensed to other companies, which can then market it and then deploy it and take on all of those processes. Um, sometimes it can be sold directly to institutions and to as an enterprise um, solution bundled in with other um, solutions. And there can often be value added services that are provided, such as PD. So it might be provided free for schools, but then the PD and the training is charged for. And that's how you gain a recompense for the investment that you've made in, into the development. So there can be a range of different ways of making it viable for you to go about creating an EdTech solution. Some other considerations is around um, interoperability and data. Um, having your solution easy to use um, by making it interoperable with other solutions within an organization can be a very key element um, in terms of decision making. So when students sign on, say, to their learning management system or to their internal systems, and then that automatically signs them on to your application and gives them full access to the application, is a very attractive thing. Rather than for students to have multiple sign-ons for different applications or different passwords, and that becomes really burdensome for schools to manage. Whether or not it works on all the different platforms available in the schools, on different types of devices, mobile devices, uh, PC devices, Mac, Apple devices, those sorts of things. Whether or not it fits in with the, um, the standards and requirements that a school has in terms of various um, requirements for software to be deployed in an organization. Where is the data held? Um, how is it involved in terms of collecting information about students? These things are very important. Whether or not it fits in with what are called metadata and learning resources. So it fits in with any larger scale um, organizational constructions around tracking how um, what's called metadata, which is tags we place onto data um, associated with student learning. Now, for better or for worse, many um, EdTech impl implementations haven't really progressed down that pathway, but there are certainly some organizations that are trying to advance that process. Of course, once we can have metadata around things, we can then utilize aspects of your application within with other applications. And then collectively they can share data and become much more effective um, as a constellation of tools rather than having each tool being distinct and creating their own data sets and their own information that has to be then processed differently. And this leads us into what's called open data, whereby we make data available so that other applications and databases and information systems within organizations can utilize that data. So for example, if in your application you assess student learning, can that assessment data be then exported and used in their learning management system or their grade management system um, easily and seamlessly? And that leads us into another area that's being slowly developed around uh, micro-credentialing or badging where students' outcomes from their learning can be recognized and that recognition can be shared with other um, aspects of their learning. So um, it may give a certificate and that certificate will detail what learning outcomes students have achieved and that can be then combined with other certificates from other applications that students have been using and collectively it builds up a picture of the credentials that students are achieving through their use of various EdTech applications. Okay, so finally, what are some areas that you can explore to come up with these ideas? So these are the main trends that are in place um, around blended learning, so combining online learning and face-to-face -face learning and different approaches to using EdTech to support that. Improving the standard of learning and establishing standards so that we have some sort of common um, understanding of how what students are learning in various ways and different tools and different um, educational um, 
processes, whether or not it's in the classroom or out of the classroom, uh, whether or not it's being done online or in face-to-face, -face, but having some standards so that we can then um, recognize that learning and combine it all around um, achieving various curriculum outcomes and other learning outcomes that want to be achieved. Testing and assessment is always a big thing um, and different ways of assessing student learning. And there are various applications that are available that you can explore to develop new ways of measuring students' learning. The personalization of learning, allowing students to have individualized learning journeys and educational technology apps that can support that. Project-based learning is an area that's relatively underrepresented in ed, ed tech. We've got quite a bit that supports direct instruction and more um, formalized uh, pedagogical approaches, but not as many ed tech applications that support students working on other pedagogical approaches, say around developing projects or inquiry-based learning. But there is still a need for more mastery-based learning where students um, build upon their learning and ed tech um, can support the tracking of their learning and um, identifying when they have mastered various learning outcomes and then progressing them after that mastery has been achieved rather than just progressing all students um, by certain dates or stages in a learning program. And finally, there is an opportunity for ed tech around assessing teachers capability, how effective they are at teaching and certifying various aspects of that, essentially assessing their teaching capabilities and providing recognition of that through various ed tech applications. So hopefully that will give you some ideas around building your own ed tech applications. And I look forward to discussing these more in the tutorials. And there is a reading for you to go through that will take you into developing ed tech applications in more depth um, was developed in the, for the United States, but many of the ideas will also apply um, here. And you can explore some of the more in-depth processes involved in developing educational technologies. So have a look at that. Have a look at um, the other resources and share your ideas onto Teams. And we'll discuss this further in the tutorial.